What's up guys, it's Rowan here from Art of Smart TV. You know, the HSC can feel like when you screw up one assessment, you, know, you can feel like the entire HSC is screwed, that you're gonna fail and not reach your goals. Now this is so far from the truth, and today I'm gonna be speaking with Blaze, who has an incredible story of you know, scoring 60% in physics, not once, but as we'll hear, you know, a couple of times, and turning it around to scoring a band six result for HSC Physics for the new HSC syllabus. And so Blazer's story is first of all proof that it is possible to turn it around, which is incredibly powerful. And so we're gonna find out exactly how Blaze did it and the steps that he took so that you can also take these steps if you too have received a HSC physics assessment that was well below your expectations. So welcome, Blaze. Hi. Now, um, you know, what happened? You, you got this physics assessment, you scored, was it 60% in it? Yeah, it was. So when I first got it back, I was like really disappointed because I was like, oh, I studied really hard but I think I didn't study like effectively, if you know what I mean. So I was writing notes, but my, but my notes were really shallow. And when I was doing the calculations, I was like taking shortcuts. And I think that's what really lost me marks. And in the extended responses as well, because my notes were extremely shallow. When I put it onto the page, the teachers read it and like, oh, it's not really showing an understanding, even though that's what I thought I was doing. And so just to, to get some clarity, this was the first, you know, you had your first assessment for year 12, term four you got this result, you got this 60%, it came back, um, and as you said, you felt disappointed, was it? Frustrated? Yeah, yeah. It, was, yeah it was frustrating because it's like, um, I wanted to start year 12 off like hard working, which I, which I did, but then when you get a mark like that, it just means that like, your hard work's going nowhere. So mm. it's like, am I, should I just continue doing what I'm doing? So it feels like you're, you've done the work, but the rewards aren't coming, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so I wanna dive in for a moment, but um, just to zoom out and, and fast forward to the end, how did you end up going in physics? What was your... your um, I think I got 91. 91, 91 yeah, which okay. is fantastic. So, yeah. w you know, my maths isn't the greatest. 31% though, I think, roughly, yeah, in exactly. terms of improvement. And how did you end up going with your ATAR at the end of the journey as well? 95.8. Congratulations. And, and, and what are you studying at university? I should be doing an honours in architecture at Sydney Uni. And was that your goal degree that you wanted yes, to get yeah, into? Yes, yeah, it was the top preference, yeah. Fantastic. So, in other words, you know, you had this HSC physics assessment. That, that went the wrong way yeah. and yet despite feeling like everything was going to fail perhaps at that point and should I give up and this sucks you were able to turn it around and get into your goal course for university at the end of that journey yeah exactly yeah which is really cool yeah, so really cool. proof yeah. that you shouldn't quit yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, when you get that first assessment now diving in a little bit here um, you know what 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 did you do you got that that assessment result back um, you realised that maybe some things had, had not gone as, as well as you wanted and you needed to change things. What were the, the steps that you took to start trying to turn that around? Well, the first thing that I did was like, I looked at, like when I got it back, I was a bit upset. So I was just like, yeah, I'm just not going to listen to this. So I put it in my bag and then I went home and then I thought about it. And so I brought it back to Adrian, who's my physics tutor. And then we looked through it and he went through every single question and why I lost marks for it. So it helped to sort of build the foundations of the first module, which helped me to understand the next few modules. And so from, just from that, I could tell that my understanding was really shallow. And so I let him look through my notes and everything and just tell me what to fix up and how to actually write my notes properly. And so I think that translated over. And then, so let's dive into notes then for a moment, because it sounds like that ended up being a really key linchpin. You know, like they weren't in depth enough to start with, yeah, exactly. and you realized you needed to change them up. So. Um, how, how did you end up writing your notes for physics and what would you recommend other students do in, in writing their own HSC physics notes? So when I first started writing my notes, I just put it all in like, a, I just got my textbook, the physics textbook that my school supplied me and I just went through the dot points and I looked at what the textbook was saying and then I just basically just wrote a summary of what that was and I just moved on to the next dot point. But obviously that, that doesn't work because the textbook's already a summarised version of what you've already got. And the new syllabus, what it tests is an, a really deep, knowledge of everything inside the physics syllabus and so I went off and I read my own things as well as I took what Adrian was teaching me as well and I made sure that I had a really really deep and strong understanding of what was actually going on and so when I wrote into my notes I still summarized all that information but now because I had had memorized it in my head when I looked at the page I could, I could discover more information. So it sounds like what's really happening is there's a, a two-step process here which is one really understanding it 
You know, it sounds like what was really happening here was that you were writing it and doing the work. You know, you were following the advice of write study notes for physics. Yeah, exactly. You were writing the notes going, cool, well, I've, I've done the work. I should get the results. But the step that was perhaps skipped in that was that really like understanding what you were writing and how things came together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so the second time around, as you were trying to change your results, it sounds like you were spending more time grappling with the big ideas. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And, and then when you were writing it, it was uh, in your notes, it was then um, you writing your understanding of what those big ideas were in a way that you could more easily reference for your actual exam prep. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, I found um, reading into university papers actually really interesting because it, it, it has that really, it, it extends your knowledge of it, but it's still sort of surrounding the same idea. So you can just sort of pick and choose what you want to understand from that. Like some things go overboard, but some things don't. It's very important. Yeah. And so then he, another thing that I'm, I'm hearing from you, which is really powerful, is your first approach was to use a single resource, which was your textbook. Yeah, exactly. Your second approach, it sounds like, was to use multiple resources, right? It's to pull from, you know, you were saying stuff that Adrian had told you. It was to pull from university papers. Yeah. It was to pull from multiple sources to really help you build a, a powerful understanding. Is that, is that what yeah. I'm... That, that, is, that is true, yeah. Okay, fantastic. And so then you were, you were constructing this knowledge as you were going, great. You had your next assessment. W what happened in your next assessment for physics? How did you go? So I, I still studied for it, but um, that test didn't go too well either. And I think it was the calculations and it was, because it was electromagnetism, which is, if you don't really know what it is, it sort of stuffs you up. And because in, during the last term of year 11, it was like the last term, so I wasn't really focusing. So I was like, oh yeah, last term, let's just get ready to have a fun holiday. And then, so when we, when we were going through electromagnetism, it didn't really work. So when it came to the actual test, I didn't have the foundations for it. And Adrian thought I did, did have the foundations for it. So I still got what, what he was learning, but because I didn't really have a, found, like a sound understanding of it, when I got into the test, same thing happened. So the calculations were wrong. My extended responses were like, they, were just, they didn't show an, a deep understanding of what was going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and so it, it sounds like here as well, um, to, to some extent, what's really interesting is that, you know, you've taken some of those learnings, yeah. you've applied them, and then yet you still haven't quite improved. And I just want to flag, because that's a really common story that I hear, is that you get a bad result, you go, oh, okay, you know, I'll, I'll try harder, try harder, and then you still don't improve. And that, that can be like a double kick in the guts, right? Um, so I think one, it's fantastic that clearly you didn't quit at that point, yeah, right? Because yeah. if you had quit, well, you know, your results wouldn't have changed. How did you push through it mentally after working hard a second time around to still then not see as much improvement as you would have liked in your results? Well, I remember like after that whole, the whole like term one and term two assessments that I didn't do very well in, I went to you and then we wrote down the percentages and we like lined it all up and we said that you've still got like 80% of your things to go. Right, just don't quit now because you can still change it. And I think when I went home and I thought about that, I was like, oh yeah, that is really true. And so I, I just had that in mind the whole time while I was studying. And I just like, yeah, I just pushed through because it's only 80%. That's right, awesome. So what you ended up doing, and what I guess we chatted about at that time together, was trying to transfer the focus on time and look at marks available. And so I think clearly what you're sharing is that Yes, you'd had two assessments that hadn't looked anywhere near as what you would have liked, yeah. but when we looked at the math, there was about 80% of your total assessment still left on the table, yeah. ready for you, and so that it wasn't too late to change things. Like you could still, if you made some further changes and some further enhancements on the, on the strategy for your study that was now emerging for physics, mm -hmm. you could turn it around, which is, is awesome to hear that you, know, that you did. Yeah, exactly. um, now, you've mentioned Adrian a couple of times. So as some context, you know, Adrian's the you know, head of science at Art of Smart. He supports students in physics and chem. Um, how did Adrian help you? Because it sounds like, you know, there were a couple of points here that you said, I went to Adrian and, you know, Adrian told me this. Like, what did your support look like with Adrian and, and what, what was the difference that he made for you? Well, I think um, Adrian, he was just like, he was a very motivational teacher. So even, even when I, I stuffed things up and in class, he'd ask me questions and I wouldn't know how to respond to it. He would always say, I know that you know the answer. You're just not trying hard enough and so when he just kept saying that over and over again I really thought about that I was like oh maybe I do and so what he wanted me to do was just get extended responses and just hand it to him because just to see what I what I knew and what I was writing down and just see the differences in there and I think when we started doing that it was just everything sort of clicked for example like I he would read some sentences and say I know what you mean but in that sentence because I because if I didn't know you I wouldn't know what you're talking about and he would also just go really in depth 
with how he was teaching. So like sometimes I would ask him like a really simple question and he'd just go like overboard with it. And I'd be like, oh, I think we're going a bit off track here. We've only got like an hour. We should probably try to do this. And then he wouldn't like stop. And like, sometimes it would annoy me, but then at the end of it, like I'd understand why he went through that because by just going through it and really thorough, he'd make sure that I understand and like, it sort of reinforces it in your memory, if that makes sense. So yeah, I think that's the main thing was that he was a really thorough teacher. He gave me a deep understanding. He was just really encouraging all the time. Yeah. So it sounds like one of the things that, that um, you were doing with Adrian was using the extended responses and doing more of those with a feedback loop to build your understanding and to really make sure as, a, as a, almost like a concept checker yeah, right, exactly. that you, you did know your stuff, yes, yes. so that you didn't get into the exam and think you knew your stuff and get a nasty surprise. Yes, exactly, yeah. So you could get that feedback earlier. Now, um, what did you do? Because clearly, you know, things started turning around for you in the trials in the HSC, yeah. which is great. Yeah. What, um, what did you do in the lead up to your trials uh, that enabled you? Because how, how did you go in your trials? Um, I think I did okay. I think I got like 70% okay. so around that. It was, you know, it was a leg up. starting to see uh, some prog progress, yeah. right? Um, and then HSC, you know, we talked about overall, you ended up, you know, you got the 91, which is fantastic. What, what did you do in the lead up to your trials and HSC then that in terms of your prep that made the difference for you to turn things around for physics? I think it was consistent working on it. So it wasn't just, oh, writing my notes a bunch beforehand and saying, yeah, it's done and having a, like a relaxation. But yeah, it was consistent. So I was writing my notes every time. And then sometimes I go back to my notes and just rewrite what it was. And which actually, like people say, oh, it takes a long time, but it actually doesn't. Because like, it's quite easy to do that if you have like a really sound understanding of everything. And it was also just doing a lot of past papers on it and just making sure you could write down your answers in time conditions. And also just making sure I could have the answers to give to Adrian to help, yeah, reinforce my understanding of what it was. Yeah. And with the past papers, you know, I think the, the, the pain of the new HSC syllabus is that there's not many past papers going yeah, around. Yeah. So, um, you know, where were you sourcing questions from? Like, like how were you getting that? Because clearly I think it's an important component. How were you getting those questions to do that sort of practice and that sort of work? Well, the new syllabus isn't as, isn't as different as the old syllabus, as many people like to say. So you, I picked out all the extended responses that I knew I would struggle with inside the actual test. And I got them from the old HSC papers and I'd print them out and I'd write my answers down. And then I'd give it to Adrian and he'd teach me how to write them again but in reference to the new syllabus with all the um, sort of additional information that you've got in there. And then I've also got the school, other schools trial papers that and I just use those as well. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. So it's a combination of using the old syllabus yeah. um, and using it, but what you did highlight was you need to be aware that uh, you know, the questions can be reused, but sometimes you've got to bring in additional material and content yeah. from the new syllabus. You've got to be aware of that. And then of course, taking advantage. And now at least there's a bunch of papers and trials floating around, which is going to make it a little yeah, easier for students, which is good, yeah. So then, I guess, um, in terms of your journey with HSC Physics, you know, you ended up getting a, a band six, which is fantastic. Um, what uh, final advice would you give to, uh, you know, a, a student who has got a, a poor result for physics during the year, which I'm almost going to assume is almost probably guaranteed, yeah. <laughs> um, in turning marks around to, to get, you know, a, a great result, what final advice would you give? I think it's just to be resilient. So it's to make sure that like a bad test mark doesn't like, it doesn't pull you down as much as you think it does. Like, as, like a 60 looks bad on the paper, but like it's actually not if you think about it. And there's, there's like the more mistakes you make, it's the more you have to improve. So, and it's a pretty cheesy statement to say, but it's true. So like, if, you, if you lost 40 marks somewhere, that's 40 marks you can gain back. And it just means that you've got a lot to learn. So you can just really push through it, you know, yeah. Awesome, thank you so much Blaze. So there you've heard it guys. We've just heard how Blaze turned things around for HSC Physics from you know 60% to a 91. And we've heard that it wasn't something that happened immediately. I think that's the really critical thing. You know, Blaze did highlight his key takeout was resilience. It took consistent work over time to actually turn things around to get those results. So if you are in that boat where you have got a, a poor HSC you know, a physics result, know that it is possible to turn things around. Now, if you do need support doing that, get in touch with us. You know, we've got an incredible team and you heard Blaze talk about Adrian, 
who's our head of science at Art of Smart as well, who's an incredibly passionate about physics and chemistry and really helping students understand it, not just rote learn it. Um, because as we heard, um, you know, understanding is going to be a really key component to excelling with the new physics and chemistry syllabus. So whatever you do, guys, don't give up. You can turn things around for HSC Physics. Thank you.